Here we are in 2015, five years after the beginning of the BP oil spill here in the Gulf, 10 years after the landfall of Hurricane Katrina, and really what was ground zero for both events here down at the mouth of the Mississippi River in lower Louisiana. This area is tremendously important for the fisheries production across the Gulf. Both of those events had such a profound impact on the communities here across the Gulf of Mexico and also on the fisheries habitat. We're here to take a look at some of the efforts that are being undertaken by nonprofit organizations, by the state of Louisiana, by the federal government to remedy some of the long-term habitat loss that's taking place along Louisiana's coast to build sustainable fisheries and sustainable fisheries communities here across the Gulf of Mexico. Both Hurricane Katrina and the oil spill had a detrimental effect on this area in particular, and, and not to mention the fishing industry but nothing compares to what's going on with coastal erosion and what it's done to the fishing industry and the way we have to adjust accordingly because we used to fish 100% of the time on the west side. We very, very seldom go over there anymore. The habitat is lost. We lost a tremendous amount of land in this area as a result of Hurricane Katrina. Of course, this was ground zero for the oil spill impacts as well, uh, and it's just taken a real beating uh, one after the other. Um, which is part of the reason that this is an area that's uh, um, an emphasis for restoration, of course, associated with the, the dollars coming to the state related to the, um, um, the BP oil spill in addition to some of the community restoration stuff, levees and so forth, that are being built in this area. The loss of coastal wetlands here in the Mississippi River Delta really is threatening the long-term sustainability of fisheries across the Gulf. It's also threatening the long-term sustainability of the health of our waterfowl population in North America. But luckily, we've got the opportunity to do something about that. And it starts with the Mississippi River. It starts with using the sediments, the waters, the nutrients that are available in that resource to replug this system and make it more sustainable. The good news is that we think if we implement the projects that we're discussing that uh, things will change for the better. Habitat will be improved. In my 35 years of guiding here on the west side, I watched it melt away with the only land sustaining as close to where Red Pass is and where there is some fresh water versus the other side of the river where we, where we fish and duck hunt is growing. One of the very few places in, in the world that's growing land. You know, we, we've lost a great deal of habitat in our state, but we're right now in the infancy of learning how to manipulate the river and grow our habitat back. It, we know we're starting some projects, we're seeing how to do it, and we're learning as we go. One of the major components to rebuilding the Mississippi River Delta is this idea of diverting water out of the Mississippi River back into the wetlands that it once created. It's a controversial subject, but one that most scientists agree is necessary in order for this place to really be rebuilt and be sustainable. What you see down here in Buras is an area on the east side of the Mississippi River that is connected to the river, where you've got very healthy wetlands and very good habitat for fisheries and wildlife. And then on the west side of the river, you've got an area that's in decline. Oil spill recovery dollars that have, uh, have come to the state so far have been primarily spent on three types of projects. They're Bear Island projects, um, marsh creation projects, uh, and, and um, sediment diversion projects associated with reconnecting the river uh, with the basin. We are evaluating four diversions on the lower river right now. Uh, we have um, um, essentially gotten to a point where we believe we have locations for those diversions. Uh, we think they'll be cost effective and we think that we can achieve uh, benefits that will be reasonable in terms of, of the amount of dollars that could be spent toward those. On the east side of the river with, with the natural diversions that are there, it is a laboratory. It is, it is proven that we can do it on a small scale. And by manipulating these diversions and learning how to put terrace in and, and slow water down and, and things of this nature, we will learn a lot to do this more cost efficient and quicker than, than just putting in solid diversions. We tend to get caught up in Louisiana about talking about, you know, sort of our, our species, I guess I'll call them, oysters and shrimp and speckled trout and so forth. But the importance of this ecosystem and the productivity of this ecosystem and all of that productivity is tied to the river, absolutely tied to the river, uh, is just immeasurable in terms of the uh, importance of the Gulf. Uh, red snapper, wahoo, uh, other species that are really important that may not be considered estuarine species or Louisiana's fish, for example, all rely on those fish that are reared here, pogies. Um, and other bait fish and things that, that absolutely support the entire, um, entire Gulf of Mexico. In my lifetime here in Bay Denise, 
east of Buras, Louisiana. This bay could have been as much as five or six feet deep. Now, because of the natural connection to the Mississippi River, you can reach down and pick up a handful of clay and mud and all kinds of silt that's come down the Mississippi River Channel. This water comes into this bay, it drops out this sediment. This makes up the basis of our marsh here on the east side of the river where we have a connection to the Mississippi. See what's happened on the west side of the river with, with our, our, all of our land and the heritage that was once there is completely gone. And because there's no diversion there, the saltwater intrusion and subsidence kill that. Versus right across the river on the east side where, where the river is connected to that land, that land is literally growing. Despite the impacts of the oil spill and Hurricane Katrina on this area, you can still come down here and catch some wonderful fish. The redfish fishing in South Louisiana is unbelievable at times. It's a great place to come fishing. With the right investments and the involvement of the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership and other sportsmen's groups, we can make this fishery sustainable for the long term. Mm -hmm.